I need to notch this out. So I put a mark right on the edge and gave myself a little room. You can give yourself an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch if you want for the grout to go in there or the polymeric sand. You'll see that later. And then you see I have over here my other mark. And I'll just line these up together and cut this little corner out. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of these pavers. I sometimes cut it without the guard. That's because I'm experienced and I'm used to using this. You have to be very careful if you cut brick without a guard on here because this guard keeps it from kicking back and cutting you. If it does kick back, this is going to protect you. Now, if you don't have that on there and you just have that blade spinning, you have to be extremely careful. And with something like that, I wouldn't suggest your average uh, DIYer to do that unless you are really versed in, in using these things because they are dangerous. If this thing comes back and catches you, it's going to slice you deep. It's, 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 it's a dangerous little blade on here. I can take this guard and shift it back and forth to get two different angles, two different sides. All right. If I didn't have the guard, um, I can go deeper and it's a little easier to see, but the guard really really does protect you and you can spin it all the way around so you know what use the guard if at all possible Okay, here's my block. Set it right in place. And I'm gonna square across it. Tuck right into there. Perfect. I'll need to do the same thing on this side, but I, I can't use a small block because I'll have too big of a gap. So I'm going to use a big block again, but I'm going to cut most of it out so it's going to look like a smaller block anyway. So I'll get this mark right here and I'll just bring it out a little bit wider and then. I'm going to get this mark the easy way. Get it squared up. Okay. This is my hand tamper or a compactor. I use this to knock down the gravel the limestone and the, and the sand. You want to pack that down tight and in between each layer you want to use this and pack it down. I'll put the limestone down, pack it down real well. After I get that done, I'll put the sand on top. You want at least a one inch sand bed. Or you can put more on there but you really want to have a, a one inch sand bed on that or that's what I like to use. I pack that down and I'll wet it, lightly wet it, come back and pack it again. That way when I go to put my pavers on, it's packed down really well and then I can just kind of take my hand and smooth it around to get it level when I put my pavers in. I'm going to use this compactor right here and that is going to get them all level. This one's packed in pretty tight. It takes a lot of hits to get it down to that level. Like I said, I'm a, I'm, I, I like to go a half inch above my point where I'm going to pack it down to because I want it to settle down in there. So you don't want to have to do that all day with all of these. So we're going to use the compactor. The papers are laid down. All I need to do is cut the corner ones, all the angles that I need to cut, and get those straight. 
I'm using my grip line tape measure by Swanson Tool Company. This is a fantastic tape when you're working on projects like this where you have to grab things at awkward angles. This tape can grab things at angles where no other tape can grab. If I'm up high or down low, it's still going to grip and I don't have to worry about it releasing. I can take this and slap it on a wall and just walk away from the wall and it still won't fall off. Now, try this with any other tape in the world. This grabs pipes over two inches in diameter. We're ready for this piece. First thing what I want to do is see where this brick goes. And I can see that's my angle right there. So I'm going to bring this angle over so I can see when I set this other block on top of it where I'm at. So take this block, I set it on top right here leave myself a little gap. You got, you got a little play. It's not like you don't have play. I'll just make this little triangle piece right here. I don't like to cut my blocks on something. I want them on the ground because it's a solid surface and I can step on one part or just cut it like this and it's going to stay in that grass. If I try to step on this and it's on a piece of uh, another stone or anything like that, it can slip and I can cut my leg. I got to be really careful when doing this. So I'm going to set it on the ground right here. And if too much dust gets around me, I'll turn the hose on right here. I score my line first. After I score my line, then I see where it is and I can put water on it. It won't matter. It won't wash my line away. Don't try to get all the way down in this corner on all of them. Right here I had to stop short because it starts pinching. That little piece is just going to break off. So right here I marked where I'm going to stop. Same thing, I'm going to stop just short of this point. This is going to get filled in with polymeric sand anyway. You want this first course right here to be perfectly straight. That's why I have a stick in the ground here and I put a screw on the deck on the other side so it runs along the whole board because I want to be able to see it from this front and see a straight line. If not, you could be a sixteenth of an inch off on the other end and over sixteen feet you're going to be an inch off over here. It's going to look crooked. I lay the wood over this board, a little bit over it and then on to here and that way when I pull this across here and it hits this flat, I know I'm good. That's not going anywhere. This has to come down to the level of the wood. This machine's pretty heavy. What you'll want to do is start it and put it on low. Then you'll crank it up a little bit and use it. And then when you want to stop, put it back down on low. You can slide it off of this wood move your wood down, pull it back on it again. Okay, let's get this thing started. See how it's on low? Now I'm just going to crank it up a little bit. The machine's naturally going to want to go downward to a downward slope because of the weight of it and it's vibrating, so it's going to go downward. If you want it to go up, just turn the machine to the up position and it'll start vibrating forward because it does pull forward as it's vibrating. This is just a regular tube. You can use uh, get a latex caulk or this is liquid nails for outdoors. This is a water base. I take the backs off of them and I clean them out real good and I can reuse them. I just made a bigger hole to fill this in with grout. You can make small holes for something, large holes, whatever you want. You can mix up your caulk and put it back in here and get a, get a color in it. It's a pretty cool way to, to caulk and to get things like this done and it's very simple. All right, now 
I'm going to go ahead and mix this mortar up, fill this tube up, and then we're going to put it in here. I keep my water, just a little jug of water so I don't take the hose and put too much at a time in here. I don't need to mix up a whole lot, but I do want enough to finish this, and if I have left over, I'll just throw it away. It's no big deal. Now here's my colorant. I'll just put a little bit in at a time. And this is Tech Skill Set. It's a, a grout colorant. If it's a little too soupy, you can add a little bit more powder to it. And mix it up some more to get the right consistency that you need. To test it out, I'm going to take a little bit of my polymeric sand and drop in there and I can see my sand is a little more tan than that, so I'll just add a little bit more. I use my two liter bottles all the time for different things. If you've seen my other video, this works great for uh, cleaning your brushes out once you painted. But let me show you something here. I'm going to take this and just pour it in while the lid's on it, and then I, I can take this and pour it into my tube. Now I have my tube. I'll take my top off. It's going to want to ooze out of there pretty fast. And I'll just squeeze it some and let it get down in there. It's always good practice to keep yourself a couple of extra rags and clean water. Okay, now I'm just going to fill this in. Right here is where I added the mortar mix, and it's rock solid. And all I have to do now is put a little uh, polymeric sand on top of this. Once I put that polymeric sand on top of this, it locks in. None of this is going anywhere. It's ready to wet down. I don't use a hose because my hose has a little bit too hard of a water spray on it and I want to just mist it. All you want to do is, is dampen it. You don't want to soak it down. So this little sprayer works well. It sprays a mist and I can, I can just wet it down all the way around real easily and uh, get this done. Any bug sprayer will work because you can just put it onto a mist. Like I said, you just want to wet it. If you hit it too hard with a hose, you'll wash, you'll wash that sand away. Well, we have another project out of the way, and this came out really cool. I'm enjoying this. We had a big party the other day, and it, it, it was great to have the shade, to have everything that we wanted out here, and to extend the patio. Check out PaulsToolbox.com for all my archive videos and any future videos that you may miss. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.